Welcome to Fine Art for All. My name is Barbara Mendes. Tonight we're going to look at three paintings that I have in the studio and examine the narrative details inside them. After that we're going to see a new film by David Nodowitz, a three-minute film which I commissioned for the outro, the closing credits, but I like it so much that tonight we're going to debut it as a film unto itself. After that we're going to have a feature I enjoy called Now We Paint, where I will create a painting on camera for you to watch the creative process. So at this time I'm going to begin discussing the paintings. The first one is called American Mandala. Now this painting was done in 1975 when I still lived in New York City and it tells the story of from the very very heart of the city we see all the tall buildings in a mandala which is a circle shape and also in New York there are many harbors and many cars and trucks and highways but what the painting does is it moves out to the suburbs and this may look like a design, but each one of these is a tiny suburban house and a tiny suburban garage. House, garage, house, garage, house, garage. And from the suburb suburbs, we move out to the country. I'm playing some uh, music by Florida Serena with the vocals of Vanessa Paloma to give some background music to looking at the art. So from the country where we have house, barn, house, barn, house, barn, we go to the mountains and out to the sky. The next painting that we're going to look at is the most recent one which I've done, and it's called King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. And it tells the story of the procession. The Queen of Sheba went to visit King Solomon, and she went in a long procession, and she brought him many gifts. And this is her coming up to Jerusalem to see him with her gifts. Now when she gets there and she speaks to him, she says, oh, King Solomon, no one is greater than you. And I really enjoy the outfits of your cupbearers and the outfits of your attendants. And I like the way your servants are seated. And I also like the bridge to the temple. So this is what we have in the written Torah. And the painting celebrates the meeting of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. This is a painting called The Prayer of Hannah, The Birth of Shmuel, and The Early Life of David. Now, I wanted to study the life of King David, and I found out that it's in the book of Samuel in the Bible, which begins with the story of a lady, Hannah. It begins with the prayer of Hannah. And first, we're going to talk about the words to the prayer of Hannah itself, which is something that Jewish people say every morning. So the painting, the lady represents the spirit of Hannah's beauty. And now we begin to follow the words of the prayer, which say that my heart exalts in God, and God is a rock. And then it goes over here and it has a lot of imagery of the haughty will be brought low, but the humble will be uplifted. Here we see the bow of the mighty is broken, but the humble will be uplifted. Here we see the, the haughty are leaving their home, but the people are getting a new home. And here a barren woman has seven children, and Hashem gives life. Hashem is God and takes away life and then lifts up again. And this is my favorite little line where people may be raised from the trash heap up to dine with the nobles. So this is the prayer of Hannah. And the book of Shmuel tells the story of, I mean, of the book, the birth of Shmuel, Samuel, the prophet. And what happens was Elkanan was a man who had a wife named Hannah who could not have children, although the other wife, Penina, had lots of kids. And so they go to the Mishkan, which we're going to be seeing in other paintings. And she prays and cries and prays, to, and the high priest hears her, and he thinks she's drunk. And she says, I'm not drunk, I am praying for a child. And he says, in that case, go, you will have a child. And then her face changes, and she's happy, and she goes home and she has a child. And it's Shmuel. And she had promised that if she had a child, she would give it to God, she would give it over to God. But she doesn't until he's weaned. So here he's not weaned yet, and they go up again to the Mishkan to give their offerings. But when the boy is weaned, she gives him to the, to the high priest, to the Kohen Hagodel to give him to God. And he becomes a, pr a prophet, a Navi. And he anoints the first king of Israel, King Shaul, King Saul. However, King Saul made some mistakes. And all I'll say is that he, for, he made a mistake with Amalek. And here he is. And Shmuel, Samuel, has to anoint a new king, which is David, David Hamelech, David. And at this time, Shaul becomes uh, melancholy. Saul is sad. And they say, why don't you try some harp playing? This is going to cheer you up. And they recommend this boy, David, the shepherd, to play for him. So he does. And along about that time, there's a big threat of the giant Goliath from the Philistines. And no one can uh, deal with him. He's just a giant. 
But of course we know the story. David comes along with his slingshot and he slays Goliath and he takes his sword, which is important for later. Now, and in the meantime, Saul's son, Jonathan, really gets to like David. He likes him so much, he gives him a whole bunch of good things. Now, David is always going off to war for King Saul, and he's very successful in battle. Every time he goes into battle, he's so successful. And the people start saying, Saul, kinged, Saul killed a thousand, but David killed 10,000. And Saul gets jealous, and he tries to kill David. But they make up for now. And then he offers him his daughter, and he says if he goes and wins this battle, he can have the daughter. But, and he does win the battle, but he doesn't give him the daughter. But he gives him the other daughter. And um, Saul hoped that he would have an ally, but actually the daughter, Michal, she loved David and she became David's ally. Meantime, Saul tells people, I want to kill David! <laughs> and so Jonathan hears and he tells David and again he makes peace with his father that he's not going to kill him. More battles, Saul's getting more jealous. Finally, he's really going to kill David and David has to escape and his wife helps him to escape and she tells Saul that, well, I don't know, he got away. And David runs away and seeks refuge with our old friend Shmuel, Samuel, the prophet. And a guy tells uh, Saul where he is, he goes running after him. And this is a funny part because when Saul goes to Samuel, all of a sudden he starts like prophesizing and dancing and going crazy and David escapes. And then they arrange a beautiful meeting, David and Jonathan, where there's a symbol with an arrow telling whether it's safe to stay or if he has to go. And he has to go, David has to leave, even though of course we know he didn't do anything wrong. And he escapes and he asks the high priest for some bread and a sword. And the bread is the holy bread from the Mishkan, the tabernacle. And the sword is the sword from Goliath. So it's given to David. In the background of the painting, we see David escaping. Here's King Saul. And David is escaping up here in the forest, running away, escaping for his life. Now here, if you may notice, I ran out of room in this picture for any more story, but I put right here in the center of the woman's necklace a picture of David HaMelech, David the king, so that we do know in the future that David became the king of Israel. And now I'd like to introduce another part of the television show.